uh, this morning, uh, I will be sharing to you a passage from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, 19 to 26. Kung meron kayong mga Bible sa inyong tabi, ay uh, join with me as I read the passage. Philippians, chapter 1. Uh, I will be reading verse 19 to 26. <clears throat> Excuse me. 19. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Our Lord, we thank you for this morning. You have enabled us to come together before your uh, holy and yet loving presence. And uh, we pray that you would bless us today. May your spirit illumine our mind and uh, bless our heart. May your word, Lord, um, inspire us to grow more in Christ's likeness, to desire more of you. And uh, you would be with us, O oh Lord, this morning as I peace upon your words. We thank you. We commit our gathering this morning in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, sabi ko kay attorney, I will be speaking on the book of Romans, but uh, along the way, I uh, nag-change po yung aking mind. And uh, I chose this uh, topic. Uh, although ang ating tema is all about uh, the teaching of the scriptures about last things, we can consider... Uh, this topic as part of last things because sabi nga sa pag-aaral daw po ng theology, ang last things po ay hindi lang naman sa mga future events like the second coming, uh, we're thinking of uh, perhaps the signs of the last days, even uh the teaching of the scriptures about physical death is part of the doctrine of the last things. They call it, sabi nila, personal eschatology. No? Hindi lang general, but personal eschatology. It means it, it has something to do with ourselves. Uh, we really need to prepare for this uh, unavoidable appoint, appointment in life that uh, we will depart from this temporal life and we will be with the Lord. Anyway, let me give you a short background of this book. Kung nabasa na ninyo yung book of Philippians, if I would give uh, one uh, description regarding this book, I would say Philippians were, or Philippians, the book of Philippians was somehow Ironic, paradoxical, parabang 
you will be amazed as you read the letter of Paul in this uh, uh, for this church. Uh, it was written while he was in prison. Okay? And yet, kapag binasa mo yung book, the joy surfaces within the books. Paul was in prison, pero yung kanyang letter, punong-puno ng uh, sabihin natin, joyful exhortations, encouraging words. Sa, dapat siya yung ini-encourage, pero siya yung nag encourage sa Philippian Church. And there are several reasons for that. The first one, Philippians were faithful partners in the gospel. Kahit na nakakulong si Paul, hindi naman siya nag-iisa. Meron siya mga kaibigan, mainly the Philippian believers, who were too supportive to the Apostle Paul or for the Apostle Paul. You, you will read that immediately in the opening verses. Sabi diyan, always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy. You see the joy of the apostle because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Another angle of Paul's rejoicing is that his imprisonment brought certain advantages. Napaka-positibo ni Apostol Pablo, bagamat mahirap yung kanyang kalagayan, mayroong limitation, ay nakita niya yung advantages na ito. And what are those? Sabi ng verses 12 to 14, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Paul's imprisonment advanced the gospel in a way so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. The first thing, sabi ng mga commentators, ito yung imprisonment ni Paul na hindi pa siya na-execute, but rather, he was somehow in a house arrest. Big sabihin, nakakalabas siya. Wala siya sa dungeon. Uh, nandun lang siya sa bahay at uh, malaya siyang nakakapag, nakikipag-usap sa mga imperial guards. At uh, perhaps what he meant here is that uh, bukod sa kanyang testimony that he was imprisoned because of uh, a bold preaching of the gospel, perhaps ay nakapagbahagi rin siya ng gospel within the vicinity of of uh, praetorium, ang tawag nila, or yung vicinity ng ng, uh, ng kulungan ni Apostol Pablo. And besides, most of the brothers having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment are much more bold to speak the word without fear. The brethren, particularly the Philippian church, uh, became bolder in sharing the gospel because of they were encouraged through the testimony of the Apostle Paul that he was imprisoned in the name of the gospel. And as we meditate upon this truth, life is filled with joy stealers. Let me call them kill joys, right? Situation that could make your heart heavy. Sa family, sa trabaho, Sa situation na ating kinakaharap ngayon, siguro marami sa atin ay namimiss na yung dati natin ginagawa sa paglabas, yung family day natin na sometimes in-spend natin during weekend, hindi na natin magawa ngayon sapagkat kailangan natin mag-ingat sa nakakahawang sakit. No po. Pero ganun pa man, as we look around, there are also many sources of joy that could make problems bearable. Huwag lang tayong tumingin sa mga Sa tingin natin, hindi magandang nangyayari sa ating paligid, humanly speaking. But uh, let us look around. Maraming mga bagay na pwedeng magbigay ho sa atin ng kagalakan. Especially something that is connected with our spiritual life. Right? Friends, 
family, and most of all, God's presence and His Word assuring us that He has control over our situation. Hindi man ito mabago yung situation na ating kinakaharap ngayon, I believe they are really uh, what we call blessings. Those things are blessings to make our difficult situation bearable. But let us reverse the story for a while. Uh, imagine for a while, while the Apostle Paul was in prison, he was abandoned by the Philippians. Hypothetical lang. Ang question is, would it alter the story? Would it still make Paul joyful? I believe, although yung mga binanggit ni Apostol Pablo ay nakapagbibigay sa kanya ng kagalakan, naniniwala po ako na ang kagalakan ni Apostol Pablo ultimately is not anchored on the situation. In fact, sabi nga ng ilang mga nabasa kong aklat, yung kagtunay na kagalakan daw, hindi nakabase sa situation. It is not based on circumstances. True joy comes from the Lord. Okay? So again, Paul's rejoicing is not anchored on the situation. It does ultimately rest on his supreme Christ treasure, no other than but the Lord Jesus Christ. Sa context ng ating passage na binasa, execution or existence, death or life, cannot rob the joy that he has, that the Apostle Paul has in Christ. So there are three ideas that I want to emphasize in our reading passage. So number one, Paul's ambition to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Dito natin makikita yung bakit mayroong lasting joy, unbreakable joy si Apostle Paul. Again, hindi nakabase yung kanyang kagalakan sa situation. In fact, later we will learn that hindi siya natatakot ma-execute. In fact, later he said, to be with the Lord is far better. So, ibig sabihin, in both sides, Paul has a confidence that it would turn to his own good and for the glory of Christ. So, una, Paul's ambition to magnify Jesus Christ. In verses 19 to 20, we read, For I know that through your prayers, and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or death. Paul was not over-concerned for his deliverance. Although binanggit niya yung word na deliverance here. Sabi niya, Christ, or rather, uh, he believes that uh, he thanked uh, the Philippians for their prayers, and according to him, the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. So again, Paul was not over-concerned for his deliverance because context tells us that his desire was to be with the Lord. Right? Rather, the word deliverance here could be translated vindication. So kung i-rephrase natin, sabi niya, the spirit, of the spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my vindication. What does he mean here? Paul was hoping for the vindication of his gospel ministry. Yung mindset, katulad ba kay Job? Do you still remember Job? He wanted the Lord to vindicate him from 
his friends false accusation. Yung mga kaibigan ni Job inaccuse siya na kaya ka nagkakaganyan, kaya ka naghihirap kasi nagkasala ka sa Panginoon. So, alam ni Job yung kanyang sarili and he wanted the Lord to vindicate him from these uh, false accusations. Ganon din si Paul. He wanted God to vindicate his gospel ministry whether in the present or later in the future, in the judgment day, perhaps. Physical death cannot hinder Paul's ultimate goal. Hindi natatakot si Apostol Pablo sa kanyang possible martyrdom, possible execution. Ano yung kanyang ultimate goal? That is to magnify Christ whether by life or by death. What do we mean by magnification or magnify? Uh, sabi ng isang writer, ang pangalan niya si Alec Mottier, he defined the phrase to magnify this way. He said to magnify literally means um, Christ will be enlarged. Most probably dito hinango yung yung term na magnifying glass to make a small object larger or bigger through that magnifying glass to make the Lord Jesus Christ bigger. Okay? Paul's desire is to place Jesus at the limelight at the spotlight. Of course, Let me qualify, hindi naman ibig sabihin madadagdagan pa natin yung glory ni Lord. Parang kulang. The point is, Paul wanted to ascribe what uh, what is worth for the Lord. That uh, He is really worthy for what is best. Paul wanted to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is his single passion. And uh, this truth surfaces in the, in the letter of Philippians. Let us read few passages here para makita natin yung, yung authenticity ng sinasabi ni Paul na ang kanya pong uh, ultimate goal, ultimate expectation is to magnify the Lord whether by life or by death. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 serves as commentary for this ultimate goal. Sabi ni Paul, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of whom? Or of what? Of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. We know the context. Paul abandoned his religious credentials when he came to know the Lord. Nakita niya yung incomparable value, yung surpassing word. In fact, sa ibang translation, he called it excellent ni Jesus Christ. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing word of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. In verses 13 to 14, the same chapter, Later, the Apostle Paul expounded or, or uh, said, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price of, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So it is somewhat on uh, what we call uh, ang tawag dito yung, yung uh, analogy parang inihambing niya sa isang race pero yung kanyang ultimate goal yung ultimate price sino? Sabi niya lang dito price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus no doubt in the context yung price and goal are repairing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he said in verse 10, 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Si Jesus po yung main goal ni Apostle Paul. Kung ito man ay isang takbuhan, okay, image free of a race, si Jesus Christ yung kanyang priceless trophy. So Jesus Christ was the Apostle Paul's ultimate goal. Is Jesus the unqualified pursuit of our life? Maganda pong uh, i-reflect natin yung truth na ito patungkol sa ating mga sarili. Si Jesus ba yung layunin ng ating buhay? Siya ba yung main goal natin sa buhay? Alam niyo po, madalas po ay nadadaya tayo ng ating sariling mga puso. May mga moment akala natin, pinupurso natin si Jesus Christ until God exposes the heart. We come because He is our provider, our protector, the one who can bless us or perhaps in a negative way. We want to do it because natatakot tayo baka later i-discipline tayo ni Lord. Now, hindi po masama yung gawin si Lord na provider. And that is true. He is our provider. He is our preserver, our protector, the one who guides us, and in fact, the one who blesses us. Kaya lang, at the end of the day, yung tanong, is Christ what we really desire? Hindi yung kanyang ibibigay, hindi yung kanyang favor, hindi yung ating prayer request, hindi yung ating prayer concerns. We come and we run after the Lord. Christ is our desire. He is our ultimate goal. You know what? If this is true, no situation can steal the joy. Naniniwala ako na si Jesus Christ will not disappoint us. It is not to say that there will be no difficult situation. In fact, kahit nga si Paul, si Jesus yung kanyang Preoccupation, he was in prison when he wrote this letter. He was in a difficult situation. Rather, it is that no situation can steal your joy in Christ. And again, as we look around, napakadaming mga bagay that, that are joy stealers as we live. This life. Happy family will not last. Maring masaya yung ating family ngayon, pero it cannot guarantee that it will remain the same after five or ten years. Maring meron ng mauuna sa atin. Mababawasan na yung miyembro ng pamilya. And that is reality. Right? Kailangan natin i-open yung ating mga mata sa katotohanan ito. What else? Friends come and go. Business could sometimes disappoint. Maaring maganda yung kita ngayon, pero later, pwedeng magkaroon ng problema. But let me remind everyone, only our joy in Christ cannot be snatched by any situation, even the most difficult one. I hope Christ would be our desire. Hindi lang po si Jesus Christ ay parang springboard. We want Him because we want other more. Jesus Himself must be our desire. He must be the primary preoccupation of our lives. How to be happy in Christ? Bakit ganito yung spirituality ni Paul? Let me tell you, it is not self-generating. Hindi po superman si Apostol Pablo. At mas lalong hindi po ito inborn desire para kay Apostol Pablo. Paul's passion for Christ is a wonderful accomplishment of the gospel. We know that. Lahat naman tayo pinanganak, walang desire kay Lord. 
until we realize is amazing grace. Na kahit tayo ay makasalanan, hindi ho tayo deserve, the Lord has forgiven us. The Lord has loved us unconditionally. At alam niyo po, kapag ito po ay na-realize talaga natin, that love from the Lord would energize our heart to love Him in return. Paul was so acquainted with the grace of Christ that transformed him from being a persecutor to an apostle. At ito yung primary thing niya sa kanyang life. How many times sa kanyang missionary journey, sa kanyang evangelism, he always emphasized how the Lord uh, delivered him from sin, from a uh, meaningless life from being a persecutor and the Lord called him to be an apostle. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 summarizes Paul's uh, uh, biography. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Look at the motivation. Who loved me and gave himself for me. So yung, yung energy, hindi nanggagaling kay Apostol Pablo. The gospel is the driving force. He lived his life for Christ because Christ first and foremost loved him and gave himself for the Apostle Paul. And we have the same experience, right? Kung tayo po ay aasa lang sa ating kalakasan, uh, we will try to uh, strive loving the Lord by our own ability. You cannot do that. Kaya nga lagi po sinasabi, bago natin isipin yung gagawin natin kay Lord, mas lalo pong isipin natin yung ginawa ni Lord para sa atin. And that would energize our heart to love Him in return, to serve Him faithfully. Minsan kasi binabaliktad natin, no, na out of focus tayo sa ginawa ni Jesus. Sa ganun, napapagod tayo. Kasi we work for the sake of work. Yung word na magnification, parang duty na lang sa atin. Pero kapag na-out of focus tayo sa gospel, then wala nang mag-motivate sa atin. Hindi na magiging masaya yung paglilingkod. Magiging routine, magiging mechanical. So Paul's ambition is to magnify the Lord whether by light or by death. And it is the wonderful work of the gospel in his life. Only the gospel empowered by the Spirit has the power to make us in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, not just Paul's ambition, but Paul's option. Ano yung kanyang option? To remain in the body or to be with Christ? Philippians 1, 21 to 24, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For I am to live in the flesh. That means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ. For that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. So here, Paul has two possible outcome in prison. As I have said a while ago, execution or release. Ang idea dito ng release, uh, kanyang desire is to labor fruitfully in the Lord. Whatever be the outcome, ang maganda kay Apostle Paul, he saw Jesus Christ in both ends. Rather, it was a win-to-win choice for the Apostle Paul. The idea of the clause to live is Christ is qualified here. 
Ano yung idea ng to live is Christ? Yung sinabi niya sa verse 21. He detailed it in uh, the next verse. Sabi niya, fruitful labor for me. Ibig sabihin kung makakalaya siya, he would still labor in his apostolic calling. Patuloy niyang paglilingkuran ang Panginoon. Hindi siya mag-stop sa kanyang uh, sa calling na ibinigay sa kanya ni Lord. How about to die is gain? It means to be with Christ. And Paul called it gain. Why? Because it is his ultimate goal. Christ is the goal and prize of Paul's life. So para sa kanya, it is far better because masigit niya nang makikilala yung Panginoon. In, in the presence of Jesus Christ, literally. That he would arrive at the finish line. So for Paul, it is far better. Kahit ano sa dalawa na options na ito. To remain in the body, it would be a fruitful labor for the Apostle Paul. Or kung dumating man yung time na ma-execute siya, hindi na siya makalabas ng kulungan, he will be with the Lord, which is far better. It is a further illustration of Paul's encompassing pressure. Yung tulad ng sinabi ko po kanina. Any situation cannot undo Jesus Christ. Release or execution Paul can confidently embrace those two options. However, let me remind everyone, based on this uh, context, Christ-centeredness is not abstract. So how can we describe a Christ-centered life based on uh, testimony of Apostle Paul? It manifests through a faithful engagement to work. For the Lord. Hindi lang po ito parang mere emotion for the Apostle Paul that it would be a fruitful labor. Again, yung sinasabi nating Christ-centered life, yung life na dominated ni Christ, Christ-centered spirituality, Living for the Lord Jesus Christ is not abstract. It manifests through a faithful engagement to work for the Lord. Ang question na lang dito, what work? Minsan ito yung mahirap i-apply, no? Kasi iba yung um, konteksto ni Apostle Paul. He was an apostle called to preach the gospel into the Gentile world. So sa atin, Where should we labor? Paano natin gagawing fruitful labor as we still live in the flesh? How can we build a Christ-centered life in a way that we will be fruitful? We will labor for the Lord like the Apostle Paul. I believe uh, this is my personal application. No? You can disagree kung paano mo tinitignan yung ministry. But the way I see it in my personal life, I believe that ministry is not confined within the four corners of our church building. That is my old school or old uh, mindset that I have before. Akala ko pag sinabing ministry, nag exist lang ito sa, sa church na madalas natin ginagawa kapag weekend, Saturday, nung panahon ko, sasama ka sa Bible study ng pastor mo. Tuloy-tuloy na yun hanggang linggo, may Sunday school in the morning, worship, tapos sa hapon, mayroon pa rin service. And we call those activities ministry. Pero about kapag ka Monday to Friday, are we still doing the ministry? Dati ganun yung mindset ko, kapag Monday to Friday, secular work, Pagka weekend, yun yung ministry. Pero later, I, and I thank the Lord, He enlightened my mind. I mean to say, uh, 
hindi lang natin pwedeng i-confine yung ministry within the four corners of our church auditorium. Ministry is wider than we usually think. Pero merong ilang mahalagang considerations. And uh, let me share with you. Una, motive. Napaka-importante ng motive. Hindi lang yung ginagawa natin, kundi yung dahilan bakit natin ito ginagawa. Like Paul, Christ must be our ultimate objective. Yung isang gawain, nagiging ministry kung ginagawa mo para sa Panginoon. Of course, specifically in a regular basis. Right? So napakalaga ng motive. Behind our works, Christ must be our objective. Another consideration is priority and management. So this is practical, no? Priority and management. Why? As si Paul, laging nakapront sa kanya yung kanyang apostolic calling. He was called to preach the gospel in, in a Gentile world. And meron tayong uh, information sa scripture na si Paul nagtrabaho din as a tent maker para suportan yung sarili niya kasi ayaw niya humingi ng support from the churches. Pero alam natin si Paul, walang family. No? Hindi siya nag-asawa, hindi siya nagkaroon ng family. He spent all his life uh, fulfilling his mission, his calling as an apostle. Pero iba yung ating calling eh. We live in a multitasking world. Napakahalaga, know your priority and wisely manage our time because every life's commitment is accountability. Ang hirap i-express. Ano ba yung calling natin sa life? Ako sa akin, kung gagamitin ko yung sarili ko, I am a pastor, pero hindi lang naman ako pastor. Ako rin po isang father sa aking anak. Ako isang husband sa aking wife. Ako po ay isang brother sa aking kapatid. Multitasking. Life. Meron tayong iba't ibang life's commitment. Sometimes yung, yung main priority mo, yung main calling mo, pwede mong ibaba kasi mayroong tawag na pangangailangan sa isang responsibility. Let me give you an example. Bilang pastor, hindi yung siguro nararapat na ipupulfill ko yung calling ko as a pastor. I mean, literally, iiwanan ko yung aking family, perhaps doing mission or or uh, doing the ministry literally while yung aking pamilya ay nagsasuffer kung, kung saan nahanap ng kakainin. Or perhaps yung aking anak ay nasa emergency room, kailangan ng aking presensya. Although yung aking main priority is my calling from the Lord to be a pastor, pero mayroon tawag ng pangailangan yung aking family na kailangan kong unahin. That is what I mean. It takes wisdom kung paano po natin i-manage po ito. Kaya nga, kapag hindi tayo balance, eh, pwedeng yung ibang life's commitment na ni-neglect natin. So very important yung priority list at yung time man- management. Nagagawa ba natin na maayos yung ating commitment sa family, yung ating commitment sa church, yung ating commitment sa ating trabaho. Even our work is part of our calling from the Lord. So again, let us consider priority and uh, wisely manage it. And finally, let me tell you, importante pa rin, uh, strive to connect it into the church or God's kingdom. Now, ipo-qualify ko later, no? Let me repeat. Strive to connect it into the church or God's kingdom. Why? Because at the end of the day, the church or God's kingdom alone will remain. What do you mean, Pastor? Ibig mo ba sabihin, kailangan lagi akong nasa church, sa corporate gathering. Dapat ay uh, i-commit ko yung sarili ko sa maraming ministerial opportunities sa local church. Hindi po ganun yung ibig kong sabihin. Strive to connect is 
let us live. Whatever be life's commitment, let's try to advance God's kingdom. The point is, iba yung ating mindset sa mga secular people, sa mga taong walang pagkakilala kay Lord. Usually, tanungin niyo po yung mga tao, yung, kung ano yung kanilang, uh, anong tawag dito, yung kanilang uh, layunin, yung life's objective, even sa kanilang work, sa kanilang mga career. They usually work to earn money, perhaps to elevate their economic life, to help their family, which are not bad naturally, right? Kaya lang, dahil hindi nila kilala si Lord, hanggang doon lang yung kanilang objectives. They do not live what we call a kingdom life. Work must be facilitated to advance God's kingdom. Kung ikaw ay isang professional, start to think kung paano mo i-relate ang iyong profession in a way that you could advance God's kingdom. Perhaps doing evangelism in your work. Live a life that could adorn the gospel so that you, you might influence your co-employees. Or perhaps kung ikaw ay businessman, you could influence your employees. Right? So the point there is that, like Paul, we can uh, we can be fruitful as we live this life. Habang hindi pa ho tayo kinukuha ng Panginoon. Pero darating yung time, katulad ni Pablo, a Christ in compassing life will get consummated. Rather, consummated. Yung Christ-centered life dito sa lupa will give way to our main objective. And what's that? We will be with the Lord forever. Our highest objective. And Paul called it again, far better. So here, Paul teaches us the art of dying. Mahalaga yung Christ-centeredness dito sa lupa. The Christ must dominate every angle of our life. You know what? Kung ganito yung heart natin, somehow, meron itong certain advantage. And what's that? It will prepare us in meeting the Lord. Dahil kung dito pa lang si Christ na yung objective natin, uh, hindi ko naman sinasabi na uh, ang physical death would be an exciting anticipation. No? Siyempre, uh, humanly speaking, ayaw pa nating lumisan, gusto pa nating makasama yung ating family. Pero kung darating yung pagkakataon na yon, again, this kind of spirituality would teach us the art of dying. Negatively, if we don't love Jesus Christ so dearly, that would really be a dreadful appointment. Dreadful, in, hindi in the sense na we will still be condemned. No. Uh, it's a sort of hindi magiging well-prepared or perhaps hindi Ganun ka-confident? Kasi alam natin na hindi tayo masaya kay Jesus Christ. Negatively. But positively, a heart longs for Christ can make our departure from this life a confident and hopeful one. Can we say with the Apostle Paul, to live is Christ and to die is gain? Can we call physical death the time of our departure a far better one. Hindi mo kayang sabihin yan kung hindi dear, kung hindi mo love si Jesus Christ. Nakakalungkot yung mga bagay na iiwan natin. Tapos hindi pa prepared yung ating puso to meet the Lord. So number three and last, not only Paul's ambition, option, finally, Paul's anticipation to remain in the body and serve the church. Philippians 1, 25-26, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that 
in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. So quickly, the context tells us yung preference ni Paul is to depart from the body and to be with the Lord. So we have to connect these uh, two verses sa previous one. Yun yung kanyang preference, to be with the Lord. But sensing or discerning the high possibility of release. Hindi, hindi pa naman ito yung final imprisonment ni Paul. In fact, sa, sa history ng life ni Paul, sa kanyang biography, nakalaya pa siya dito. Yung final book pa na naisulat niya ay yung Second Timothy. While the book of Philippians was written while he was in prison, pero nakalaya pa si Pablo. So na didiscern niya na makakalaya pa siya, he was willing to minister into the Philippian church. All right? Why? Philippians were dear friends of the Apostle Paul. Napakalapit po ng mga kapatid sa Philippi kay Apostle Pablo. Kung titignan natin yung context ng letter na ito, out of their love for Paul, they sent Epaphroditus to bring their monetary support to the Apostle. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit sinulatan sila ni Apostle Pablo. Gusto nilang paalalahanan ang mga kapatid sa Pilipay na nakasurvive si Epaphroditus from a deadly disease. At nagpasalamat siya sa kanilang support while he was in prison. And here in verses 25 to 26, Paul specified his desire for the Philippians. Ano ba yung kanyang layunin? Kung makakalaya siya, gusto niya pa rin mag-minister specifically sa mga Philippian believers and, and syempre, generally, sa mga Christian churches during his time. Ano yung kanyang layunin? Una, he wanted the Philippians to advance in their faith. You can read that in, in verse, uh, I think, of verse 25. Sabi niya, I know that I will remain and continue with you all. For what? Your progress and joy in the faith. Secondly, he wanted the Philippians to glorify Christ through his presence. Sabi ng verse 26, uh, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus. Kung baga yung presence niya, encouragement sa mga believers in Philippi. At ang layunin niya, through his presence, the, the, the Philippian believers would grow in the faith and would live their lives for the glory of God, for the glory of Christ. To make more of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun yung kanyang main objective. So as we apply this truth, while we are in this life, let us live our lives for Christ. Right? This must be a fruitful labor for the Lord. Tulad ng sinabi ng point number two. However, we can learn from the Apostle Paul. Sabi ko nga kanina, we do not work for the sake of work. Primarily, uh, our work should never be pointless. Kanina, I have discussed living a kingdom life to make more of Christ. Let Christ dominate our lives. How? Dito para sa, para sa I mean, in the light of the Apostle Paul's examples, we can see in the light of his objectives, influence others to do the same. I mean to say, Christ should be our ultimate goal, then let us influence others to do the same. All right? Let me draw some applications. Dito kasi si Apostle Pablo, kung makakalaya man siya, gusto niyang 
i-edify yung mga believers. Gusto niya ring matulad sa kanya that they would live their lives for God's glory, for Christ's glory. So let me draw some applications. Wherever the Lord calls us to work, let me remind everyone, be the gospel yourself. Like the Apostle Paul, hindi man tayo Apostle, this is our essential goal. Be the gospel. Let us adorn the gospel wherever we are, whatever be our calling is. Adorn the gospel that we believe by your conduct. In the family and even in the workplace. Another thing, if there is an opportunity, speak for the gospel. We have a mission to do. I think this is a way we can advance God's kingdom. Speak for the gospel if there is an opportunity. Then, be a contributor for our fellows' spiritual advancement. We call it edification. So meron tayong mga kapatid sa pananampalataya na meron tayong oportunidad na makapaglingkod, makapagminister, do it. Okay? This is how we are called to work in God's kingdom. Alright? Iba't iba man tayo ng calling. Some of you work in the office. Some of you perhaps are housewives. I am a pastor. So meron man tayong diversity in terms of calling. This, what I have mentioned, are essentials, non-negotiable. Ito dapat yung maging work natin in God's kingdom. Again, adorn the gospel, speak for the gospel, and finally, let us help our brethren to advance in their faith. Meron po akong isang teacher, ano, bagamat uh, naging teacher ko nung high school. Uh, every time na umuwi po ako sa aming probinsya, sa Bataan, uh, maigsi lang yung bakasyon. Hindi ko po nakakalimutang bisitahin yung person na ito. Uh, humanly speaking, malaki po ang aking utang na loob sa taong ito. Pero alam ko, ginamit lang naman siya ni Lord. Most of all, I thank the Lord for His life. Ito po yung taong ito, yung dahilan kung bakit ako nakakilala sa Panginoon. Uh, high school po ako, tanda-tanda ko pa, uh, ang life ko, walang direction eh. Kung, nar- kung narinig niyo na po yung aking testimony before, uh, maaga pong namatay yung aking mother. First year high school pa lang ako. Tapos yung father ko, hindi naman kami nag-guide kasi nagkatrabaho siya sa malayong lugar. Uh, so sa madalit salita, hindi ho healthy yung aking high school life. Puro bisyo, barkada. Talagang patungo na po ako sa isang typical na kabataan na alam natin ngayon kung ano yung galaw ng mga kabataan. No? Walang pangarap. Ang pinakamasayang araw sa iyo pagkasama mo yung barkada mo habang sabay-sabay kayong nagbibisyo. Nagpapasalamat ako sa teacher ko na ito kasi one day tinawag niya ako para mag-Bible study. Pinakisamahan ko lang ito eh para syempre teacher mo nakakaya. But the Lord used him to lead me sa gospel kay Jesus Christ. I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ through that Bible study. By profession, he was a teacher. Natatandaan ko po na pinipersecute siya ng co-teachers niya na dinadala yung religion niya sa school. Pero pinagsyagaan ako ng taong ito. Merong time na ayayin niya ako doon sa likod ng school building. Ang Bible lang na ginagamit niya, yung packet Bible ba? Pina-Bible study niya ako. Hanggang nung nakagraduate na ako sa school, binabalikan ko yung teacher na yon. Malaki pong contribution sa akin yung taong ito. 
why I grew, I advanced in my spiritual life. For me, that teacher lived a kingdom life. Alam niya kung paano ipamuha yung kanyang Christian life in the context of God's kingdom. So, mga kapatid, let us learn from the life of the Apostle Paul. Let me end here. Jesus Christ is the ultimate objective of life. Ito po yung main point, no? Let Him be our highest satisfaction and joy, whether by life or death. Let me ask everyone, what is your passion in life? Ano yung big thing sa life natin? May Christ define the totality of our existence. May we be able to say with Paul, to live is Christ and to die is gain. How can we do this? Of course, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi ito self-generating. Always remind ourselves of the gospel. Hindi natin ito kayang gawin kung hindi lalalim yung ating pagkakilala kay Jesus Christ. Hindi mo mamahalin at hindi mo pahalagahan si Jesus Christ ng higit kung hindi mo mauunawaan kung papaano tayo minahal at pinahalagahan ng Panginoong Jesus when we were still living in sin, when we were in our unbelieving condition. So Jesus Christ is the ultimate objective of life. Let Him be our highest satisfaction and joy. Huwag tayong matakot sa COVID. Dapat tayong mag-ingat, of course. Pero hindi ho maaagaw ng COVID sa atin yung joy na mayroon tayo kay Christ. Worst to worst, dumating yung time. Tayo po ay lumisan dito sa lupa, anumang sakit na matanggap natin. It cannot steal the joy that we have in Christ because according to Paul, to be with the Lord is far better. May the Lord bless His words into our hearts.